This is from Psalm uh, 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He makes known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to his children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for giving us your word, and I pray that this morning you will help us to be reminded of all of the wonderful things you have done for us. Lord, we thank you for bringing each one here. I pray that you will open ears and open eyes and minds and hearts um, to your truth that has been spoken through your word. And may we be faithful to it. In Jesus' name, amen. So I was thinking this week in preparation of this sermon about memory. Well, actually, I was for- thinking about how much we forget things. Um, I mean, last Wednesday, uh, if you can believe it, marks one year that we got London, our foster daughter. Been a year, and you know, then you know, you take your year pictures, and when you then you upload them, and then you know, the fancy things have all this. One year ago today, this happened, and and so you start looking at the pictures, and you're like, I can hardly remember that. You ever see that? You look back at pictures, you know, and then you start scrolling because you know, once you start in that, they trap you somehow. I don't know what they do. They trap you, and you start scrolling back in time, and you start looking at pictures and pictures and pictures, and then you get to a couple of years ago. I don't, I don't remember that. There are pictures with me in it. And like, I don't remember that picture being taken. We forget. We forget. Um, hopefully, mine isn't worse. You know, maybe I'm on the path of my mom, who has Alzheimer's. But maybe it's a tad early for that. Hope, hope so. Um, anyway, but I think the real reason, the real reason we don't remember those things it's because we don't try to remember. And for the most part, when an event is over, it doesn't take long for those memories to just start fading away, slipping away. We get, we get into what's happening today, what's happening now, and get caught up in that, in the now, in the right now, here and now. And we forget because it doesn't pertain to me now. And the psalmist, he wrote about this sinful human nature of forgetfulness. The first verses, we read it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. 
I'm convinced he wrote this because he, like you and me, forget. We forget so fast. We forget all kinds of things, places and events. And we'll, we'll, I'll get calls from people after an announcement on Sunday morning. What time was that thing happening again? They heard it, but right then and there it didn't matter, so it didn't pertain. Tomorrow it matters, but you can't remember it. We, we just forget. We forget people's names. Oh, do we forget people's names. Sometimes, right after they just told you, you meet someone. Oh, hello, my name's Ryan. What's your name? Oh, Michael. Michael. Nice to meet you, Michael. And you talk about some things. And you know, oh, have a good day. And they leave and you leave and then you turn and you look. What was their name again? And you search and search in that spot that is just dark and black in your brain memory and you cannot find it. Cannot find it. I think the real reason we forget people's names is that we are too focused on how we think we are doing on the conversation. How, how is that other person going to think of me and I'm more concerned with that than remembering their name? How am I doing in this? How are they looking at me? Are they going to remember me? Because I sure don't remember them. But we forget. We forget all kinds of things. We, we forget birthdays. Unless you're on Facebook, then you cannot ever forget a birthday again because it just screams at you every time. We forget phone numbers. Well, actually, we don't really have to remember phone numbers anymore. And I hope none of you have ever forgotten an anniversary. I can always tell by a look real quick if there was a forgotten one. Do not forget that. But we, we forget all kinds of things. We forget. We're forgetful people. And we forget about God and all he has done for us. Martin Luther was once asked by one of his parishioners that came up to him, Father Martin, why do you preach the gospel to us every single week? And Luther looked down at him and said, well, it's because you forget the gospel every single week. And he's right. We forget so quickly that we are merely the creation of the all-powerful, all-knowing, perfect and holy God. We forget that we are not as good, as cool, as awesome as we think we are. And we forget that God the Son, Jesus, took a beating so you don't have to. We just forget. And I find it fascinating that the very first benefit that we are not to forget, mentioned in Psalm 103, forget not his benefits, the first one deals with forgiveness. It's the first one. Don't forget forgiveness. I mean, how often do you think about it? How often do you recall in your comings, in your goings, in, in your daily lives, hour by hour, how often do you remember, oh yeah, my sins are forgiven. Well, if you're anything like me, <laughs> it's not that often. Um, which is why you, you need to be still. We need to be reminded from some of the other Psalms to be still. We need to have some time in your life where you can just stop and be still and be reminded your sins are forgiven forgiven. You have been redeemed from the pit. We get wonderful, gracious news, wonderful words. And later in the psalm, we read the words given to Moses on Mount Sinai in verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious that He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I mean, what a wonderful reminder that God is not mad at you. God is not punishing you. All the anger that God has toward you and your sin, all the wrath, all of it that you deserve is no longer directed at you.
Jesus took it. And instead, God looks upon you with love. Steadfast love. And in verse 10, we read that He does not deal with us according to our iniquities, nor repay us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. You are not going to get what you deserve. Because of Christ, you get mercy. And then in verse 12, Eden and Hannah saying it wonderfully, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. It's more good news. And I find it so interesting that the directions east and west were used and not north and south. Um, because, you know, you can only travel so far north and you have to quit. If you travel north, you're going to get to a spot where you cannot go north any farther. There is a set distance from north to south. You're done. You're standing on the North Pole. The next step you make has to be south. You're stuck there. We get east and west. If you could somehow get in an airplane and just start traveling east, when would you start going west or meet west? You'd never run out of east. It'd keep going. You can keep going. East goes forever. So your sins are removed that far. And they're never going to be used against you anymore. But we forget this. And we need reminders. We need to remember. That you need to be reminded. Your sins are forgiven. You need the reminder also that nothing you can do is going to make God love you more. Well, if I do this and if I do all these good things, then, then, God, then God is going to be more pleased with me. He's going to love me more. No. And you need to be reminded that nothing you do will make God love you less. Oh man, I sinned again. God must really hate me now. He, uh, there's no way he could love a guy like me anymore. Not true. There's nothing you can do that will make God love you more. There's nothing you can do to make Him love you less. But remember, it's not your goodness that God sees in you. It's Christ in you that makes you pleasing to God. And God was, is, and always will be pleased with Christ. And we get the benefit of having Christ as our advocate, as our mighty fortress, as our refuge and strength. He is your righteousness. He is your mediator. He is your savior. He is your substitute. Because he loves you. Just as, as a compassionate father loves his children. But there is, in all of this wonderful news, there is one caveat, one qualification for receiving all the benefits of the Lord. I mean, see, there are, there are benefits that all people receive from God. I mean, air. Everyone gets air. It's God's air. He made it. It's His. And He gives it to everyone very generously. We don't thank Him very much for air. We should, but air is very important. We also read in Scripture that God sends rain on the righteous and on the wicked. And you could have a farmer who's just shady in his dealings and all kinds of stuff, and they might have the best crops. They're going to make a lot of money. God sends rain on both. So for the most part, it seems like all basic life necessities are given to both believers and non-believers. But the other benefits, the eternal benefits mentioned in this psalm, are given with one very important stipulation. We get it in three verses. Verse 11, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. 
in verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. And in verse 17, but the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. So as I was reading through this, I got to that and we were trained whenever you get to repeated passages, you got to, whoa, slow down, what in the, what's going on here? And so I wrote after verse 17, what about those who don't fear him? What happens to those who do not fear him? And fear of the Lord is, is a, means that you honor God so much that you will, you will strive not to offend him by anything you say, think, or do. It's a reverent, respectful, humble, worshipful attitude toward God. So what about those who don't fear him? who have no awe of God, who do not point to God and say, that is a holy, righteous God. They don't get these benefits. They don't get them. If you do not fear God, you will not receive mercy. You will not receive renewal of spirit. You will not receive satisfaction. And you will constantly be searching for that purpose of life, meaning of life. And you're going to be looking in all kinds of places because that's what created people do. We were created to worship. And we are going to worship something. And we look in all the wrong places and hope. Maybe this time, maybe this one is going to satisfy. Maybe this one will give meaning and purpose. But it doesn't. You keep searching. You might search for meaning and purpose in your family. Maybe you think, oh, my, my spouse, my husband, my wife, my wife is going to complete me. They're going to, they're going to make me feel that my life has meaning now. Or maybe I'm going to try it through my kids. I'm, going to, I'm just going to live through my kids and I'm going, to, I'm going to just try to push them into everything and make them to, into everything that I wasn't and help them along so that I'm going, to, I'm going to live through them. Doesn't work. You might falsely think that sex or porn or drugs or video games or social media or one of those is finally going to bring joy or meaning and purpose that I've been searching for. Maybe I'll pour into work, my job. I'm going to make lots of money and I'm going to get very successful. All of those things were not created to bring fulfillment and meaning and purpose. Created things will not and cannot do what only the Creator was meant to do. And those who are not fearing God will never have this true peace, this true joy, because they are still in their sins. And they are currently an enemy of God. And they are living in rebellion to their maker. And when one does not have a proper fear of the Lord, if repentance and faith do not take place in their heart and mind, they will not have the steadfast love of the Lord given to them. They will not receive compassion from the Lord. Instead, they will experience pain and suffering unlike anything they can imagine. And it will be unbearable, except they will have to continue to bear it forever. So I implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That doesn't have to be you. 
Humble yourselves. Admit guilt. Admit you have sinned grievously against God and run to Him for refuge and He will not turn you away. He does not turn anyone away. He will forgive you of your iniquity. He will redeem your life from the pit. He will satisfy you with good so that your youth is restored, renewed like the eagles and you will soar in your spirit. And He will no longer see you as an enemy, but rather as a beloved child. And you will know, not think, not feel, not wonder, you will know that your transgressions, that your sins are removed from you as far as the east is from the west. And you will be loved with a steadfast, everlasting love. It's almost unthinkable that we could even forget something like that. Isn't it? But we do. We do forget. We forget about his benefits all the time. Our life shows it which is why it is vitally important that you not only hear the gospel week after week, it's important to remind yourself to preach the gospel to yourself every single day. Day after day, remind yourself, my sins are forgiven. God has given me grace and mercy. He has not given me what my sins have earned for me. Uh -uh, No, God has saved me. He he actually loves me and he proved it by dying on a cross for me. When you are reminded of that wonderful news, you won't be able to help yourself. You will just say in your spirit, in your thoughts, in your prayers, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. When you remember these benefits, You'll be like the trees we talked about early in the other psalm, planted by streams of water, bearing good fruit where the leaves never wither because you are constantly being enriched and encouraged by the living water pouring into you, refreshing you, strengthening you, reminding you that you are loved by God. Your sins are forgiven. And we, we then get the joy of praising God with all the angels, with, the, with all the heavenly hosts, with, with all tongues and tribes and nations, all of God's works, His creation, praising Him for the patience He has with us, praising Him for the mercy He has shown to us, praising Him for the steadfast love He has lavished upon us. Praising Him because our sins are removed from us as far as the east is from the west. And He has granted us everlasting life. We have much for which to praise Him. And Lord, as we think about all that, all the praise that you deserve, every, all the, the blessings that, that we should be given to you, all the praise and honor and glory, Lord, forgive us for not doing it enough because we could, we could praise you 24 hours a day and it would not be enough. Lord, we are grateful that we will have eternity praise you forever for not giving us what our sins deserve. Lord, you are the creator. You are the maker. You get to say what goes and what doesn't. Not me. And far too often we do what we shouldn't and say what we shouldn't and think what we shouldn't. And we thank you that you sent Jesus to take the punishment that I deserve, that that we all deserve. And I pray, Lord, that we will 
bless you with all that is within us for all of our days and all of eternity from everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen.